guys, welcome back to Project Anatomy. In today's video, we'll be going over the epidermis. This is the first of a series of videos about the epidermis. The way we'll break it down is by starting off with cells, and then we'll talk about the different layers of the epidermis. So let's get right into it. Structurally, the epidermis is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. That's a mouthful right there, but if you break down the word, you'll understand what it means. Keratinized, it means that the cell is loaded with a protein known as keratin. Stratified, the cells are layered on top of each other. Squamous, these are flat egg-like cells. Epithelium, the tissue is epithelium. Now there's four distinct types of cells which populate the epidermis and it's separated into four or five distinct layers. Let's talk about the cells of the epidermis. The four cells of the epidermis are keratinocytes, melanocytes, epidermic dendritic cells, and tactile cells. Now let's go through each one of these four different types of cells. The chief function of keratinocytes is to produce keratin. So as I said, keratin is a uh, protein, it's a fibrous protein that helps give the epidermis protective properties. Now these keratinocytes are tightly connected to one another by desmosomes. The keratinocytes rise up from the deepest layer of the epidermis known as the stratum basal. Now, this layer almost continually undergoes mitosis in response to prompting by a epidermal growth factor, right? And that's a peptide produced by various cells throughout the body. So now what happens is that as cells are pushed up by the production of new cells through mitosis, which are beneath them, they make the keratin that eventually dominates their cell contents. Now the most interesting part about the keratinocytes is that by the time they reach the surface of the skin, they're completely dead. They're essentially keratin-filled plasma membranes. So consider that for a second. Whenever you look at somebody, you're looking at nothing but dead cells. So my question to you is, do you still feel beautiful on the outside? That was really cheesy. Millions upon millions of dead cells are rubbing off every day. All right, and this gives us a totally new epidermis every 25 to 45 days. Regions of the body that are subjected to friction on a regular basis, like your hands and feet, they actually produce keratin at an accelerated level. Now, if you play the guitar, you understand this concept because you most likely have something known as a callus on the tips of your fingers because of all the persistent friction of pushing down the strings. And this also occurs um, you know, if you have poorly fitting shoes, or if you lift weights, you'll have calluses just proximal to your proximal phalanx on all five digits. The next type of cell is the melanocyte. Melanocytes are spider-shaped epithelial cells which synthesize a pigment called melanin. Melanocyte function in a very interesting way. So now bear with me here, so I'll first describe their function more formally, and then I'll sort of describe it in a more natural language. So as melanin is produced, it accumulates in membrane-bound granules called melanosomes. They move along the actin filaments by motor proteins towards the end of the melanocytes processes, which would be the, the spider-like arms. Now from there, the granules are taken up by nearby keratinocytes. And these melanin granules accumulate on the superficial or sunny side surface of the keratinocytes nucleus. This forms a pigment shield that protects the nucleus from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation in sunlight. Now I'll explain that in more simple terms. So basically what's happening is that the melanocyte produce these sacs of melanin, which move along the melanocyte towards the ends of the cell, the spider arms. And then they leave the melanocyte and enter a keratinocyte. From there, that sac of melanin will bunch up on the top side, the side facing the outside world of the keratinocytes, nucleus, right? And now that thick layer of melanin, that pigment, is what protects you from solar radiation. That's pretty amazing. The star-shaped epidermal dendritic cells arise from bone marrow and migrate to the epidermis. Another name for these epidermal dendritic cells is Langerhans cells. These Langerhans cells ingest foreign substances, which is a key signal for our immune system. These epidermal dendritic cells have uh, cylinder processes that extend among the surrounding keratinocytes and that actually forms more or less a continuous network. So you can imagine these keratinocytes and melanocytes and tactile cells spread across the epidermal layer and many of the spaces between these cells are filled in by Langerhans cells with their slender long arms 
almost as such the way water fills a network of creeks in a forest. And last but not least, we have tactile cells, also known as Merkel cells. So these Merkel cells are located at the epidermal dermal junction. So right as the epidermis turns into the dermis. So every tactile cell is associated very closely with a sensory nerve ending. This combination is called the tactile or Merkel disc. And it functions as a sensory receptor for touch. Okay, now that we've talked about the different cells of the epidermis, in the next video, we'll discuss the different layers of the epidermis. So hopefully you're enjoying these videos so far, and I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you.